Ah, you caught me ready to go out on a walk. Whenever I head out on a walk, I think of what are the important things that I need to bring. I need a hat because I don't have any hair. Go Sonics. I need keys because I need to be able to get back into the house. I need a bag because you never know what might happen when you're out. But the important thing as well is I need to go out with an anticipation of joy. When I go out on a walk and I am ready and excited about a walk, like my dog Piper, I find that I enjoy the walks more when I am thankful for just the chance that I have to be able to walk. And I go out on the walk just saying, Lord, what do you have for me today? Today we're getting ready for worship. Welcome to FPC worship. And one of the best things you can do is get what you need. Get what you need for the next hour as we gather in worship but also gather an anticipation that God is going to meet us. And as we gather, that we will encounter the Almighty God. Let us prepare. Would you join me as we pray? Lord, be with us as we enter into worship. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's prepare what we need and let's get ready to encounter the Almighty.
My name is Becky. I'm the choir director here at FBC, and I want to welcome you to worship. We welcome all who will join us for worship this morning. A couple of announcements. First of all, greetings from the choir. I know you've been missing us. We've sure been missing you, but we're missing one of our choir members who passed away this week. Sandra Franklin died, and I know that you'll join me in being with her husband, Roger, and her daughter, Kristen, and, and celebrating her life in any way that we can. And a celebration of a new life, Bailey Lee Bennett was born to Natalie and Patrick this week, and we welcome her. Here's the way we always start our service. The Lord is good all the time. All the time, the Lord is good. If you're watching us on YouTube video, you're welcome to pass the peace in the chat section if that feels good to you. Here's the way I like to start my service always in the Psalm 100. This is a choir director psalm for sure. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Would you pray with me? God, we shout and sing thanks for the goodness you've shown us in so many ways. Your world is incredible. and We're such lucky children to have been given a place in it right now. Help us to appreciate all the good around us. Now, will you join us in singing together? I know it seems a little weird when you're at home to sing, but do it anyway. It'll feel good. Thank you.
here's our prayer of confession this morning. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We're deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse this earth that you made. Now join me silently confess our sins. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of life abundant given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. And here's the great news. No matter what we've done, we are forgiven and we are made whole. Thanks be to God. Oh, Elena, did you see this? You have to look at this, Elena. It's so amazing. Look at this. Can you see those little tiny things? I wonder what they are. Oh, look. Evie wants to know too. Oh my goodness. When, I wonder if we scared them. Look at those little tiny... Oh, <laughs> they're little tiny spiders. Where are they all going to go? Oh my goodness. This is such a wonder. Those little tiny legs, the little tiny yellow bodies. It just makes me amazed at God's intricate care. The care of this created little home. For these tiny spiders. When I stop and see this, I wonder at how much, how creative God is, and how much He cares about even the littlest things. What do you wonder when you stop and look at what God's created? Hi everybody! I'm here with Lindsay Escher. We're both in our gardens and we're just going to talk today about um, what it's been like for Lindsay and her family during this time. And Lindsay, I wanted to start out by asking you the intergenerational question, which is how do you see God in dark places of fear and grief? Um, so when I read this question, I was a little bit panicked because I, uh, I I really struggle with um, feeling alone in those times. I'm a, an extrovert. So when I'm having a hard time and there's not someone that can physically hug me or encourage me with words, um, that's really hard. And it makes me feel, it makes me wonder why God, why would you be a God like this um, to someone who feels like they really need that encouragement in a real physical and audible way. So it's a struggle. Um, however, I, I think those dark moments are short lived. And I think usually what brings me out of it, um, I'd have to say is the new morning each day, like knowing that, um, I feel so refreshed in the morning and that God has given us, especially right now, this incredible season of spring. Um, and he's been so consistent in that way. And that feels like such a gift, um, mm -hmm. right now. And, um, yeah, that's, that's what I Think. Thank you, Lindsay. I love even the the idea of like nighttime as being a darkness, but you you wake up to the light of the new morning and, and sort of that recognition that there's a cycle to it. That yeah. yeah, and that times of loneliness help you understand kind of that you're you're grieving a little bit or something's happening inside you. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you for sharing that. So, so Lindsay, tell us a little bit about your family and where you live in Bellingham, just to set us up for what it's like to be homeschooling right now. Um, okay, I have two daughters. They are seven and 10 and a husband, John. And uh, we live in the Columbia neighborhood, which is so wonderful right now because there are people around all the time, even if they're six feet away we can still interact and see our neighbors out together and um it's absolutely beautiful all of the gardens are getting a lot of investment right now so it makes uh everything look wonderful and it's really enjoyable to be here yeah so what is it like then then homeschooling what's homeschooling been like um 
it is uh, initially I thought this is the best ever because I love having our kids home. I absolutely love the summers when they're with us. And um, I have two daughters who are very crafty and fun to be around and energetic and generally even keel. Um, however, I didn't realize at first what a gap that uh, this the loss of school would be for our kids and all their activities, um, especially my 10 year old who's a real extro extrovert and also really thrives in, in schedule. Yeah, so she's, not, so she's not sleeping as well. And so we just kind of had to reevaluate what we were doing. And, and I'm not really much of a scheduled person at all. So it's um, caused us to, each day we're reevaluating, how do we do this? Um, it's a lot to juggle. Um, and so we've, we've found that if we can get out every day, at least get her a lot of exercise each day, walk the dog or run down to the beach, um, get her on her bike. That's helped a lot. And, um, yeah. And, and, and this, the whole, uh, interface of, of using screens now is, is not something that we were accustomed to. And that's been a struggle and a challenge to want to have our kids on the screen as much as they are. Um, but yeah, so it's been a balance and I'm in school myself. So trying to do that and their school feels like a lot to juggle. Yeah. So we've talked about your own schooling, Lindsay, yeah. you're training to be a nurse right now. What is that like for you during, during a pandemic? Um, so thankfully I'm only in my prereqs, so I'm not, uh, so I'm not, I wasn't actually doing clinicals, so nothing was canceled. We're still doing everything mm -hmm. online. Um, it does cause me to, sorry, to pause, um, and think, uh, do I want to do this? It's a lot of risk or it feels like in a time like this, is this a lot of risk to put my loved ones in? Um, and at the same time feels like, uh, an investment in the community and, um, mm -hmm. And yeah, in a future career that's uh, would be consistent for our family. And so I have had a lot of moments of do I, is this what I want to do? And I've, I've talked to people who are in, in it right now and it sounds like it's a, been a real struggle. So mm -hmm. it does make me stop and double check a lot. Right. right. Yeah. I, as we're talking, I, I keep thinking, coming back to that, your image of waking up to a new day Mm -hmm. and a new morning and just I think that day by day that that you're in your quarter right now and you're evaluating constantly whether this is the best thing for you and your family thank yes. you for sharing that um so I just wanted to wrap up the interview though and hear a little bit you have two girls two daughters and they're home together a lot what has it been like? What have you seen in, in sisters as they've been home together a lot? Um, so while there's a little bit of bickering and fighting because seven and 10 are two very different ages, um, they actually have really grown closer in this time. And I really have loved watching them. It's been just beautiful to see even other families connecting and um, just digging into one another. Um, they play very well together. And um, my older daughter, I find her teaching things to my younger and um, putting on plays and skits. Sometimes they'll join their school activities together and do something big and creative. And that's been really, really special to watch as a mom and, and know that this time wouldn't be happening, that my kids would be off with their own friends or um, doing their own schoolwork or own activities. So it's great in that yeah. way. Yeah. And I know too that gardening is such a value to you do you how do you engage the girls in in that passion of yours well the interesting thing is that i was a lot of times i'll say oh i'm about to go plant these do you, does anyone want to come and often it's oh mom no you know and um recently my little girl one of them my seven-year-old came out and said mom i need a plot of land i need a place to to plant as my own and I had not planned for that I have <laughs> for every space in my yard so instead I just said you know what forget it if she's interested in this moment I have to like take advantage so she planted all kinds of wonderful little things and this was like just a few days ago but her radishes have already come up and oh. she absolutely loves vegetables which is so weird she doesn't eat anything else but loves vegetables um so she has vegetables and flowers growing and it's such a gift to see her getting interested and usually she hasn't been the one interested it's been my older one so it's been cool to see it kind of 
blossoming and she was out watering without being told, which is pretty cool. So it's pretty special to have that. Yeah, to, that you can see her understanding of what it takes to care for a garden yeah. as it's being expressed. Well, um, I'm so happy to let you all know that we're going to be talking to Lindsay a little bit more about um, how gardening can tend to your spiritual, emotional, and physical health during this time. So tune in to our health moment on Facebook this Wednesday, or you can check out um, that further conversation on our website under Health Connect. Thank you so much, Lindsay, for doing yeah, this thank with us. You. Yeah, thank you. It was so good to talk to Lindsay and hear more about her family and the joy that she finds in the garden. And now I'd like to introduce you to another FPC mom, Beth Loudon. Beth enjoys um, gathering plants and creating soaps, special soaps for them. We give the gift of her soaps to our new moms at FPC. I'm going to give this box to Natalie Bennett, who just gave birth to baby Bailey. But take a listen now to Beth as she talks about the wonder that she finds even in a weed like the horse tail. Hi, my name is Beth Loudon and I've been going to FPC for 10 years and I am one of the founders of Summer Hill Soap Works, a soap company that I have with my mom that's kind of a secret. Uh, one of the things that I love about being a Christian is exploring God's botanical bounty, which is, uh, off, which is surprising, the lessons that you learn from being out in your garden. Um, one of the things that I'm learning during this coronavirus pandemic and during um, my quarantine gardening time is that there are many unexpected gifts to be found in nature. One of them is horsetails. Everybody hates this weed. It is a big nuisance. Um, people have a hard time eradicating it from their garden, but what they don't realize is when you break open the stem of your horsetail and have this little segment here, it's actually full of a juice that is a mixture of pure vegetal silica and biotin, two things that are in super high-end beauty products and people don't even realize it's just growing in your ditch and in your garden. So you can squeeze some of the juice out, soften up the tip, and if you don't have nail polish on your nails, you just paint it on like a nail polish and let it dry. It's one of the unexpected luxuries of creation. Paint it on your nails. It'll kind of make them a little bit whiter. It'll make them stronger. Uh, my mom, who I do the, the soap company with, is a guitar player, and so it helps to make nails stronger if you play guitar or if you're gardening. Um, and it's just, a, it's just a cool little tip I learned. So now I just pull my horse tails out and paint them on my nails, and that kind of helps keep them at bay. And it's a, it's a cool beauty trick and a gift from God. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lindsay, and thank you, Beth. I appreciate what you guys had to share. I must say that when I was a boy, making sure that my nails were strong was not high on my list, but I used horsetails to clean pennies. I don't know why it was so important to clean pennies, but we would use the horsetails and make the pennies look all bright and shiny. You can try that if you want to at home. I'm not a big fan of gardening, I confess. I love that people love gardening. To me, it is just a chore and drudgery, but I love to walk and I love to walk outside and God's creation. It reminds me of all that he is doing. It reminds me of his goodness. And as I walk, um, I sometimes think of the stories that I was told as a kid, stories from the Bible, but I also think of a family story. One of our family stories was about my great, great, great grandmother, Susanna. And she arrived at this country when she was about 15 years old. She arrived and found herself in Ohio and she ended up getting onto a group that was a group of pioneers that were going across the frontier. It was a poor person's group. So she was in a handcart in a handcart company called Willie's Handcart Company. They left far too late. And as they left, things were very dangerous. They walked through snow, they walked through rain, they lost many, many people. At one day, they buried 16 people. It was one of the greatest tragedies of all the immigrants that came across this country. But as she went, the story goes that there was one day that was particularly hard. The weather was very difficult. She was very down. And on that day, she ended up sitting down, sitting down in the snow. And as she sat in the snow, she decided that she was done. 
and that she was going to give up. The story goes that she heard a voice, a voice that she attributed to God, and a voice that said, Susanna, get up. And she got up, and as she made it in to camp, she found the camp preparing a group to go rescue her. I always loved that story. There's something kind of amazing about that story, about God giving us the strength to keep going even when things are difficult. Do you ever find that you have times of great difficulty, times of great challenge, times when you need strength, when you're at the end of your resources? This is a text that I turn to on days like that. Let's listen to the Fisher family as they read God's word for us. This is the word of the Lord, Isaiah 40, 21 through 26. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out like the heavens of curtain, and spread them a tent to live in, who bring princes to naught, and make the rulers of the earth as nothing, scarcely as they're planted, scarcely sown, scarcely as their stern stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them, and they weather in tempest, carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Who is equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created thee? The, these. He is who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them by, all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fisher family, thank you. I appreciate that. The beginning of this chapter, the beginning of the idea that Isaiah shares feels to me a lot like the book of Job. The book of Job is a long, very ponderous book. And in that book, we find Job asking God to plead his case against God. And at the very end, God shows up to hear Job's case. And it is a powerful moment. But instead of just listening, God says, now it's time for you to listen to me. And God begins to ask a lot of questions about creation and how creation is put together and how all of creation works. And Job does not know what to say. He does not know what to answer. We hear Isaiah beginning, have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? There are two incredibly important keys here. Number one, God is huge. God is creator. God is amazing. We look out on creation and it screams that God who created this is amazing. The one who created this is incredible, is big, is mighty. But the second is also important. And the second says, who are people? People are creatures. People are creatures that were created. And in comparison to the awesome wonder and greatness of the creator, people are tiny and transitory. People are small, all people, even powerful people, even famous celebrities. Scarcely, God says, are they planted. Then he blows upon them and they wither. God says that people are like grass. The grass withers and flowers fade. As we gaze upon creation, it helps to ground us. It helps us to ground us in the reality and the truth. As we gaze on creation, we are reminded of the eternal truth that God is the uncreated creator, that God was, that God is, that God will be, that God is eternal. And all that we see is transitory. Even the mighty rocks are transitory. Here for a time and then gone. The grass withers, the flowers fade. People are a flash in the pan. They are a blip in the long string of history. But listen to verse 26. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. God brings out the host and numbers them, calling them all by name because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Here is a practice that I'm a big fan of. It's an important practice in my life. It's a practice of looking out on creation. 
looking out on all of creation. As we gaze on creation, we are reminded about how incredible the Creator is. And I encourage us to look at the trees, to look at the mountains, to look at the islands, to look at the hills, to look at the things around us and appreciate that God created them, that He God made them. But then look at the macro, look up in the sky, look at the universe, look at the solar system, look at the planets and the trees, look at all that is out there and know that God created that. And then look down at the micro, Look at the paramecium, at the endoplasmic reticulum, at the Golgi bodies, at the small little images that are so small, things that we cannot even see with the naked eye and know that God created them as well. And they all live in a balance, in a miraculous balance. And as we look out on creation, it shouts the glory of God. It shouts that there is a creator and that creator is awesome and creative and imaginative and powerful. As we look out creation, we are reminded about how incredible and amazing God is. That we are small creatures, like grass, but that God is incredible. How can you do that today? How can you look out on the joy of creation? How can you gaze at the wonder of creation and allow it to point you to the greater truth that there is a creator and that that creator is powerful and awesome and wonderful? Let's try and do that right now. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. these words repeated have you not known have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth we heard that part the last time but this time Isaiah goes on he does not faint or grow weary his understanding is unsearchable listen to those words he does not faint or grow weary the creator God 
who created the multiverse, who created galaxies, who created planets so much larger than our own, that creator God is still at work. He has not grown faint. He does not grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He did not create and step back and then stop entering in. He did not create and then just let it continue on as momentum goes. But the one who created is still at work. He grants power to those who need power. He grants resources to those who are in need of resources. He is not done with us. He did not stop when he created us. He has not grown faint. He has not grown weary. He is still at work. And then this truth from Isaiah 40, 28. Isaiah writes that even youth will grow tired and weary. All of us, I expect, can remember our bodies when we were youth. Remember how we felt invincible, how we felt so strong that we could do anything. Some of our youth now don't know how blessed they are to have the bodies that they do. As you get older, your body doesn't feel so invincible. My back used to feel like a giant iron beam. Now it feels like a series of glass balls that are delicately perched right on top of each other. But even youth will grow tired and weary. Young men will stumble and they will fall. Even at the peak of physical strength, youth will start sucking wind. Because our hope is not in our own strength. Our hope is not in the strength of our youth. Our hope is not even in our youth, although we love our youth. Our hope is not in our minds. Our hope is not in our money. It's not in our governance structure. It's not in our constitution. Our hope is in the creator God who does not grow weary, whose understanding is unsearchable. And then the line that brings me so much comfort from verse 31, those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That image of wings like eagles comes from the Exodus. That's the way God got the Israelites out of Egypt, on wings like eagles. God renews strength, but there's a caveat. There are three ways that God can renew our strength. We can mount up with wings like eagles. We can run and not grow weary. We can walk and not faint. Sometimes God renews our strength and we mount up with wings like eagles. It is a miraculous way that we are able to do far more than we could ever imagine, that it is clearly the power of God at work in our lives. It is a supernatural, joyful moment. I must confess that in my life, those feel few and far between. And sometimes God gives us the power to keep running, to keep running beyond when we would be able to run, to keep running further than we would ever be able to do. He gives us the power to keep running and not grow weary. That is also a supernatural strength and a joyful thing when it happens. But there's a third option. The third option is that we would be able to keep walking when we don't feel like we can walk anymore. That like my great, great, great grandmother, Susanna, we would keep walking even when all we want to do is sit down in the snow. We would keep walking when we feel like we have nothing left. That we would keep walking when we feel like there is no hope. That we would keep walking because the Lord renews our strength. I love the idea of rising up on wings like eagles. I get excited about running and never growing tired. But the reality in my life is that my life has been marked by moments and times when I have been able to walk. When I had nothing left that I have been able to walk when I didn't feel like I was re had resources to go, that I have been able to walk when I didn't think I could take another step, that God's power has resulted in me being able to walk. I'd love to say that God every day will rise us up on the wings of eagles, but sometimes, most often, the power of God is manifest in the reality that we keep going, that we keep walking, that we keep putting one step in front of the other. Scripture is clear, we will all face challenges. Scripture is clear, there are going to be moments that we are going to want to give up. 
Scripture is clear that we will face trials and tribulations. But be of good cheer, for the Lord is at work. He does not grow weary, and he will renew our strength. I used to love the writings of a guy named Tim Hansel. Tim Hansel had an outdoor ministry, and they used to do incredible things. They would often get kids who had different disabilities, and they would get them rock climbing, and they would have kids in wheelchairs, and they would get them climbing up these rocks. It was a beautiful thing to watch, but it was also very frustrating and very challenging. And sometimes when they would get frustrated, their staff would look at each other, and they would give each other this thumbs up. They would just thumbs up each other. And I remember asking him, what, what's up with that? Are you just encouraging each other? It seemed like a very encouraging move. Hey, thumbs up. He said, no, no. In our ministry, thumbs up means call on the power of the Holy Spirit. When you don't have anything left, when you don't have any resources, when you're about to lose your patience, thumbs up. Call on the power of the Holy Spirit. One of my favorite stories of someone continuing walking was a man by the name of Dave Dravecki. Dave Dravecki was a pitcher for the San Francisco Giants. He was an all-star, great pitcher. As a young man, he was just starting in his career when it was discovered that he had cancer in his arm. He had that cancer worked on, he went through a year of therapy and he was back pitching on the, in, the, in Candlestick Park. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was an incredibly beautiful day and he came out and he won the game and San Francisco was a buzz. We were so excited about this young man who had recovered from cancer. Well, four days later, he was pitching and this snap was heard in the fifth inning while he was pitching. He collapsed on the mound and the arm that had had cancer had broken in mid-pitch. He was never going to pitch again. And with that broken arm, he just stood and encouraged the Giants and cheered them on and they won the pennant that year. It was a great year. And when they run the pennant, he jumped out and jumped on top of his teammates and they jumped on top of him. And in the midst of the giant celebratory pileup, his arm was broken for a second time. And when they looked at the x-ray, they discovered that his cancer had returned. And the only opportunity at that point was to amputate his arm. In the midst of that time, all sorts of radio announcers, they'd see him on the side of the side of the dugout with no arm, and they would say, how, where does his strength come from? And the irony was, if you had asked him, he would have told you. He told anyone that he could find. His strength came from the Lord. He was going through one of the most difficult things any baseball player could ever imagine, but his strength came from the Lord. And he would tell you that now, as he has continued to serve and minister for years after, with only one arm, that his strength comes from the Lord. Brothers and sisters, have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord does not grow faint or weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Wait on the Lord and he will renew your strength. Sometimes you will rise up on wings like eagles. Sometimes you will just keep running and you will not grow weary. But most of the time, he will give you the strength to keep showing up, to keep walking, to daily put one foot in front of the other. Call on the power of the Holy Spirit. He will be there. Will you join me as we pray? Lord, we thank you for the way that you walk with us, for the way that you give us power when we need it. We thank you for the way that your spirit is always there to transform, to convict, to renew, and to give us strength. Let us call upon you when we are in need, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Yeah.
Join me as we pray together. Dear Lord, we pray that churches of all traditions may discover their unity in Christ and exercise their gifts in service of all. We pray to you, O God. Hear our prayer. That the earth may be freed from war, famine, and disease, and the air, soil, and waters cleansed of poison. We pray to you, O God. Hear our prayer that those who govern and maintain peace in every land may exercise their powers in obedience to your commands. We pray to you, O God, hear our prayer. That you will strengthen this nation to pursue just priorities so that the racist may be reconciled, the young, educated, and the old cared for, the hungry filled, and the homeless housed, and the sick comforted and healed, we pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer. That you will preserve all who live and work in the city and county, in peace and in safety. We pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer. That you will comfort and empower those who face any difficulty or trial, the sick, the disabled, the poor, the oppressed those who grieve and those in prison. We pray to you, O God, hear our prayer. That you will accept our thanksgiving for all faithful servants of Christ now at rest, who with us await a new heaven and a new earth, your everlasting kingdom. We pray to you, O God, hear our prayer. Merciful God, as a potter fashions a vessel from humble clay, you form us into a new creation. Shape us day by day through the cross of Christ your Son until we pray as continually as we breathe and all our acts are prayer. We pray to you, O God, hear our prayer. And we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. See a humba cookan yenny quenkos. 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 See a humba.
hamba sia hamba oh sia hamba ku kan jadi kuengkos sia hamba hamba sia hamba oh sia hamba ku kan jadi kuengkos we are marching in the light of god we are marching in the light of god Oh! 